Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to play three versions of Blue Moon of Kentucky. This tune was written by Bill Monroe back in 1945, at the time when he was playing with Flatt & Scruggs. Soon after writing it, he played it at the Grand Ole Opry and everybody loved it, so he soon recorded it. Uh, as you can hear, it's a waltz, uh, a nice steady 3-4, but in 1954, um, who should come along and record it but Elvis on his very first record, and he did a 4-4 rockabilly version. And uh, Bill Monroe, I think, would have been uh, shocked and appalled when he heard it uh, because he was very defensive of his music <laughs> and um, I think everyone in, the, in country music uh, who wasn't on the rockabilly and rock and roll bandwagon uh, was very much against it to start with and um, it was only when uh, Elvis had a big hit with this and the royalty check started rolling in that it occurred to Bill Monroe that actually this was rather a good thing uh, that Elvis had done, and so um, Monroe re-recorded it, starting in 3-4 and then going into 4-4. Um, and if there's anything guaranteed to get you a yee in the middle of a performance, then I think it's that 3-4 into 4-4. So, I'm going to give you, first of all, a simplified version of the melody, um, and then I'm going to give you a fiddle version with lots of double stops, and then I'll give you the 4-4 version, again a fiddle version. So let's start off with um, just the skeleton of the melody. And it's a pretty um, movable melody, I have to admit. Um, so the, the three versions are going to sound quite a bit different in various ways. One, two, three, one, two... Now it doesn't sound very much uh, when played like that, but uh, you can fairly simply add extra notes to pad out the chords. So um, put C under the first chair, G, and then F under that A. You can put a G under there if you wanted, or a G above that. slide of an E flat up to an E. An A under this F, C under the G, interested I do have a video about how to add extra notes to make either two note chords or there's a thing called the scale of sixth which helps you to harmonize a melody as you're going through. Uh, I'll play it again this time with um, the backing and I'll put in some of those double stops.
look at the second version which is more complicated and has some uh, lot of double stops and a bit of tricky second position stuff. Um, and if you find there's some bits in here that you like but some bits that you don't like then you can simply leave out the tricky bits and just refer back to the, the simple version or find just something in between. So we're starting off with a little kick, kick off rather than just like that. So uh, the um, that is how it would be sung, Blue Moon, whereas that is a very fiddly way to start. So we're starting off uh, with a down and two ups and uh, kind of a punch on those two ups. And then we've got a C under the G. And we're doing a triplet running down uh, a little chromatic run. Now this is um, a C, uh, C note with a four finger under it and it's quite hard to get that in tune. And we're sliding down that. Let's just go from the beginning up to there. One, two, three, one, two. C with a G under it. So this is up to third position. First finger, third finger. And we're uh, just putting the second finger on for that note. If you wanted, you could put your fourth finger up there as well. Then on to the third line. tricky one so we're going up to third uh, to second position rather so replacing that second finger with your first finger so first finger on the C third finger underneath it to play the A so sliding down a semitone both fingers and up second and fourth finger and then one and three sliding down to first position C is going to a C7 and we're marking that with the flattened seventh which is the B flat with the G under it. Now let's go through those four lines. One, two, three, one, two. Before in second position, we're doing a similar one with the first finger on the G and the third finger on an E. So it's one and three. So you can see that this particular move is one that you could do in various tunes and in various keys. Now here's a move from a fourth finger on over the third finger. Slide down. So that's a useful one for going from a C to a G. And you might find it easy to do third, third position, two over one. Right, here we're going with a C with an E under it. And then a, a blue note, a B flat. And that is a E flat over a G, a D over an F, and a C over an E. Let's go through the second half of that. Let's go 
go all the way through that with the backing. going to do it as a fiddle melody then this kicking will be very useful stops are going to help this and if you were playing this in a band and, and there's someone singing then it would be a good idea not to play the full tune but to do something like this in other words uh, doing shuffles and I do have a video all about uh, the Nashville Shuffle and the Georgia Shuffle, which are your two main choices. Um, your other choice would be... Nice discreet chops, or if you fancy the more modern chop... through this um, at tempo. you could dredge through the 3-4 version and pull out some of those fancy double stops and just stretch them to fit 4-4 and uh, some of them would I think work very nicely. Uh, the only other thing is you would have to practice going from uh, which is how it would change and that's where you get the, the yeehaws hope you enjoyed this. If you would like a copy of the dots then do subscribe and send me an email and you'll get all three versions. And I'll play you out with twice round the fast version with a little bit more improvisation. See you again soon. <laughs>